Um, no, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. It's been a really, really interesting uh, presentation and lots of themes that I wanted to touch on have, have been, been said already. But um, um, here, at, here at Bridges, I um, am a director in our outcomes uh, partnerships team where we support um, the creation and management of um, outcomes contracting and social impact bonds, which is one uh, use case for impact investing and one one way that impact uh, investing can be mobilized and we are an impact investor um, and we've mobilized uh, now well over 200 million dollars of, of funding globally um, to support outcomes contracting and, and I wanted to talk a little bit about how outcomes contracting um, could be uh, an interesting uh, tool and an interesting way to mobilize uh, um, uh, impact investing in the context of uh, in the context of Ukraine I think what we'll probably see in 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 the aftermath, or well, in the current and aftermath of of of, of the challenging situation that that Ukraine is in, is is a, is a flow of funds from organisations, from development organisations, as well as um, funds within the government to kind of redevelop and redesign both the um, social economy as well as the real economy. And um, there, the opportunity exists to redesign those those systems and services which are uh, encouraged to improve the lives of of Ukrainians. Um, in a way that um, is more aligned with 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 what those services are intending to achieve, and that's where outcomes contracting comes in. And I'll now just share my screen. I've got a short, very short presentation um, that I will try and run through quickly. Um, just give me one second. Just let me know. You can see see my screen. Um, so what we have is uh, an outcomes partnership or an outcomes contract basically consists of two components. So you have a funder, which is often government, a donor, uh, a corporate who has some um, outcomes that they want to achieve um, in the context of something like Ukraine. There could be and, and, and hearing some of the challenges that, that, that I've heard today. You know, there's some challenges around employment. There could be some challenges around displaced people, problems that need to be solved. Um, and, and outcomes that need to be achieved. And what, what an outcomes contract does is it, it, it redefines how that funder pays for the service. So rather than pay for the service to be delivered, they pay for the outcomes of that service to be achieved. And then they ask delivery organisations and delivery partnerships to come in and um, uh, bid or, 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 or to, to, to achieve the outcomes that they want. And, and, and if the outcomes are achieved, they will then pay that delivery partnership for the services that, that have been achieved. Um, so how is this different from traditional um, traditional servicing? So the, 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 the boxes on the red are, are kind of how traditional traditional um, procurement and traditional services um, are, are managed. So you have a, you have a, a problem that you wish to address. Um, you'll then have the government or the donor agency defining a solution to that problem, setting a budget, and then asking delivery organizations to deliver on that exact specification. And then the um, the funder will pay irrespective of, of whether the outcomes are achieved or not, or, or whether the results are achieved or not. On the outcomes contracting side, we define actually what success looks like. So we said so the funder will define what, what are we trying to get out of this? They will then um, select the outcomes uh, to be achieved, to be paid for. Delivery partners will then um, be encouraged to deliver on those outcomes and they will have the flexibility to iterate and innovate to, to be able to achieve on those outcomes. So actually the service will shift based on what is needed to deliver on those outcomes. And then the, the funder will only pay if those, those, those outcomes are achieved. So if, if, this, if this works well, we see sort of very good alignment, innovation, um, better outcomes for people and better value of, of, of services is kind of what we hope for if this uh, methodology of, of, um, uh, of, of contracting uh, is achieved. And how does, it, how does this catalyze investment? So if you think of any service, and if we take education as an example, you, if you deliver education today, you actually won't see the outcomes of that of that delivery often for a year or two years after the um, after the service has been delivered. So actually, the costs you're incurring now of delivery, and 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 so for example, with education, you're delivering the services in schools today and maybe next year, and then you're measuring the outcomes of that service. And actually, the outcomes will happen, you know, two, three, four, five years down the line. And so the the payment for the outcomes come in, you know, two to three years after the service has been delivered delivered. So actually that opens up a gap, a working capital need. Um, and where impact investors can come in is to fill that working capital need, supporting organizations who are um, uh, delivering on the outcomes to, to be able to do that delivery, to be able to fund that delivery. 
um, and then can take on the risk of, of those outcomes actually happening. And that's what organizations like 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 we do. Um, so why why do this? Because it leads to more outcomes. We believe it creates innovation in service delivery. So for example, in COVID, we run um, a, a, a bunch of family therapy services in, in the UK where uh, a child would have been taken into care, um, uh, where a family kind of, a child within a family would be taken into care. And we said to the government, rather than that child going into the care, we'll deliver this therapeutic service. Now in COVID, actually therapy was very hard to deliver, but we were actually very quick to change our therapy delivery to online. We actually bought iPads for the families um, involved and allowed that service delivery to change. Um, it also can bring together a range of stakeholders uh, to address problems. So we can build quite complex partnerships to, to address problems and create a culture of joint problem solving to address those problems. Where, where can this work? So we, we've got a range of areas where we can, we've can we done done contracts where I think could be could be interesting and, and important for Ukraine as, as, as um, uh, the, the country moves into recovery from this challenging situation. Areas like homelessness and employment we've heard about already are, are big challenges and, and, and we've got contracts in the UK and, 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 and abroad in both those areas. Um, we're currently working in Turkey where there's a large youth unemployment problem uh, to, to support and address that problem there. Refugee settling, there's a there's a program we're running in the UK to support displaced peoples um, to be able to settle into new areas. Health and education are big areas. So in education, we're currently working in Sierra Leone and Ghana to improve the quality of, of, of schooling, um, as well as in the UK as well. And in health, we are currently running a, a, a lot of programs in the UK around social prescribing, which is a, a program to kind of bring the social element back into healthcare delivery uh, alongside the med medicalization of many problems. Um, all of these areas have like clear outcomes that can be defined and clear clear outcomes that can be paid for that could be then conduits for um for uh, areas like impact investing and i think could play an important role in how ukraine um successfully uh moves into a flourishing um uh, way after the current uh, situation and and yeah it's uh, it's really been really inspiring to hear that hear the speakers um before me and 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 um you know, I think there could be an opportunity for 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 outcomes contracting to fit alongside a lot of the other very exciting work that will happen uh, over the next few years. Thanks, Marina.